Elbow in the ribs. Just go for coffee. Like that. Make you get up and go grab a cup of coffee. We won't hold it against anyone. I always say putting tennis coaches in a room is like putting polar bears in a jungle. You can just about survive, but it's not your natural habitat. <laughs> okay, all right. So, instruction. Let's talk about instruction. I've worked for all these different organizations, lots of different things. Uh, this is sport time. This is like uh, where the John McEnroe Academies are in. Some of you know that. This is Norwegian Federation, Tennis Australia, IMG. This is the Dutch Federation. The LTA Midtown is the clubs up in Chicago, down in Florida. Butch Staples runs. He's a national director. You know Butch really well. The point of putting all these logos up here is that every single one of them teaches kids tennis in a different way. And part of your instructional program has to be, you have to define a language. Now I'm not here to tell you there's only one way to do this. In fact, I'm going to tell you the opposite. Yeah? You, I can't tell you that you don't speak proper English in the South. Actually, a little secret. The English changed the English language a lot more than the Americans changed the English language, which is why, yes, yeah, true. Right? We bastardized the language. You did. Right? So your pronunciation is actually truer to the normal one than English people. But you're not allowed to tell anyone outside this room. <laughs> okay? But you get the idea, yeah? Language is, you can't tell me that Spanish is a bad language or Italian is a bad language. Just as I want to teach tennis this way, I want to teach tennis this way, I want to teach tennis this way. The point is that you have to make sure everyone gets on your bus. Now, the problem that we have in the US, and I'll, I'll, say, I'll say we, because I live half my life here, half my life in the UK, um, and um, because your educational standards only require you to do two days, you've got most of your education after your certification. Whereas, yeah, so you got qualified, and then you went and did a whole lot of other things. Right? and got your education, whether through experience or a whole lot of other things. If you were, for example, in the Netherlands, you have to go to one day a week for 40 weeks just to pass the basic level of coach education. All right? And that means everyone's much more on the same page. So what I'm saying to you is when you get a group of people together, you have to define, this is what we do here. We know there are other ways to teach, <coughs> but in our club, in our facility, in order to maintain velocity. You know the difference between velocity and speed? Direction. Velocity as direction. Yeah, in order to maintain velocity, where we're going, what we're doing, you have to make sure everyone's on the same bus. No one's off the side trying to unscrew the wheel nuts and take the wheel off. Yeah? So, um, here's the way we kind of work out our velocity to start. The first thing is I always do is, and if you know about goal setting, you know this is a common thing. You always start with where you want to end and work backwards. Yeah? So every month I go, I'm going to lose at least six pounds this month. Okay? I used to be fit once before I spent my life on aeroplanes. Unfortunately, it kind of always starts at the beginning and normally that's about, about the 28th of the month. Instead of what I should really do is say, this is where I want to be on the 30th of the month and therefore on the 28th I need to be here and on the 25th I want to be here, the 20th I want to be there, the 15th I want to be there and work it backwards. And we have to do the same with yeah, and this is what I do when I go to consult with the club. Say, for example, um, you know, I went to sport time where John has a bit of an influence over what gets taught, his pros are there, and they said, okay, we want our toilet to look like this. And it's tactical, very smart, this, 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 you know, lots of stuff like that. Right? And then, and then they work backwards. And that's quite important because your 10 and under program is not an, an island. It should be a 6 to 16 program, and that's just that bit of it. So when you get to 12, it needs to go beyond that. So I always get the high-performance coaches involved in deciding what the curriculum is for the, for the uh, U10s, because actually I want them to tell me, well, I want to be working with a kid at 12 like this, and 14 like this, and 16 like this. And therefore, we have to lay the foundations. It's the same thing as you know, the New York architect that can look at the hole in the ground and tell you how to the building is going to be. You have to start thinking about what those foundations might be. So that's quite important. And it's quite important then to start thinking about you know, how do you think about these areas? And sometimes the way we do it is, has anyone seen a butler's bubble before? You kind of shave these things. So here's, here's the areas we want to do. Like, okay, we want to be really, we want to spend a lot of time on physical development. 
So we're going to shade that out to being a five. Versus, okay, mental skills, yeah, we're not too worried about the 10, we're just going to leave that for two. Technically, I want my kids to be technically really good. And by the way, there is no reason why you can't teach lots of technique to young kids. It's a very important part, but you have to just start with something. Why? Right, so if you teach an adult, they can understand why they're doing something and they trust you. Well, if you want to be very technical with kids, it's fine. If you say to them, right, um, I want you to finish, I want you to uh, make sure that you finish your racket all the way over your shoulder, with your elbow up here and your hand in that position. Right? One of the old traditional technical things that we would say, yeah? Why, coach? Oh, because I want you to kick the ball deep to keep the other guy behind the baseline. Yes, coach, that sounds like a good idea. We're going to do that, you see? So that's the way you have to approach technique. Technique is very, very important. This message that says, let's give the kids the balls and the rackets and put them on the court and they'll all be able to play. Yes, if you want them to hit a forehand like that, lasso three cows before they hit the serve and their backhand like this. <coughs> if you want them to be really bad, just give them the balls and rackets and let them get on with it. Some of the kids will end up being good. Look, we all know, we all know the best kids learn by themselves. We all know that there's a few peacock coaches out there who strut around going, look at my kid. <laughs> yeah. And you're going, yeah, you didn't do anything. That kid was born for that. Right? But every other kid, which don't forget, are all the other trees in the jungle. We have to make sure that, you know, whenever you get a good, healthy tennis environment, it's because all the trees are pushing against each other. So the kid that's number 12 in your club is pushing the kid that's number 10, who's pushing the kid that's number 7, who's pushing the kid that's number 5, and the number 2 is pushing the number 1. And if you don't have that, you know what's going to happen with number 1? He's going to go off and find another club where he can actually get some decent competition. So you have to look after the whole jungle. Right? That's a really important thing for us to think about as we develop this. So we've got these. How would you, we're going to, I'm going to ask you to talk about So we've got just performance factors. Mental, we're going to do a whole lot of mental skills stuff this afternoon in a fun way. So that's the presentation stuff. Physical, technical, tactical. All right, now this is directed is how much you tell people something. Right, hit your forehand this way, which is fine as long as you've got them to buy it. And I, I use this analogy quite a lot. If I said to you, do you want a Ferrari or a tractor? What do you want? You get to choose. Generosity of the USPTA. Do you want a Ferrari or a tractor? There's a country girl down here. I'm going to have a tractor. Right? <laughs> Most young men go, I'll have a Ferrari. You go, yeah, because you probably need it to get any kind of date ever. Right? Okay? Right? If I said to you, oh, I've got to tell you, there's a field full of mud here. <laughs> really deep mud about. There's no way around the field. By the way, there's a box on the other side. for <coughs> six million dollars. Or Ferrari or track. Yeah. See? See? So you can be directed and be technical because those two things kind of match up quite a lot, right? but you have to explain why. That's all. all right? um, how much guided? So that would be a lot more of how much you're going to use. Questions? Right? How much orientated towards, you know, and I use these two, it's very simple ones because a lot of you will be sitting here and saying, I want to use tennis to make certain kids' lives better help them to get better education, help them to learn some of the fundamental core things that they need to learn in life. One of the things I always ask parents is, if I could guarantee your kid will not ever play pro or get a college scholarship, what do you want them to get from tennis? And they go, independence, sportsmanship, problem solving, discipline. Okay, describe Roger Federer. In the same kind of term, independent, sportsmanlike, good problem solver, discipline. Okay, so actually, whether your kid's going to be professional or not, even get a college scholarship out of tennis, we should be focusing on the same thing. It's always a conversation we have with parents. It's a very simple one to have. I've got a whole other parents' presentation which I willingly share with you at another time, but it's a real interesting one to talk about. Most of the time, parents don't understand what their job is like. They have no idea. But anyway, so you just got to look at this work and say, okay, are you, is your, if, you know, if somebody said to you, if somebody stopped you at Piggly Wigglies, which is still the best name for a supermarket <laughs> in the entire universe, <laughs> <laughs> right? 
whoever thought of that was a genius. Right? Someone stopped you in the queue at Piggly Wiggly. Do you have Piggly Wiggly here or not? Yeah. Good. It's a good state. I, I judge the states on whether they have a Piggly Wiggly or not. None in New York. I hate it. Right? Okay? Right? Are you about personal development or player development? I'm not saying you're... Look, remember these are shapes. So I'm not saying you have to be all one and not about the other one. I'm saying, yeah, but you probably can't all be five in every single one. So if you took those slices, how would you divide it up? And this is very important because you have to explain to somebody why they should come to your tennis program. And I'm trying to make you think more than just my job is to teach you how to play the game of tennis. Yeah, my job is actually to do a bit more. Okay. Right, on your table, what do you think? What does your dartboard look like? Okay. Well, it can be, it doesn't have to be what it's going to look like. It can be, right now, yeah, right now we're big on technical, we don't do a lot of this, we don't do a lot of that. In the US right now, most people are very low on physical, for example. Don't do a lot of those kind of things. All right, go a couple of minutes. A listening break from me.